on Scott X 1307. Uh, coming back with another flea market haul. I'm uh, getting behind on my videos. Uh, these books are from a couple weeks ago. And uh, probably noticed the videos have been posted lately, or uh, some of them are about a month old. Um, you know, I got down to the end of the semester in school and was dealing with finals and all that, and it was uh, just short on time busy busy at work and uh, they just announced that uh, our store is the busiest in the in the region and within three states so uh, <laughs> they've been they've been killing us at work hadn't had a whole lot of time but uh, we got I uh, got a pretty good haul here from the flea market a couple weeks ago um, got uh, a little stack of 20 cent books and uh, some priced books. Found some pretty good stuff. Um, so, uh, we'll start off here first with a minor key. Uh, X-Man number 15. Uh, it's first appearance of Onslaught. Um, let see. Second time I think I found that in the uh, quarter books. So I will pick that up for 20 cents just about any time I see it. And that's actually, that was the only Marvel book um, uh, in the 20 cent books I picked up that week. I uh, found some pretty neat DC stuff. Uh, first I got this book here. It's uh, Doom Patrol Index, uh, number two of two. Um, it's DC characters, but it's actually produced by this ICG Independent Comics Group. And uh, it just gives a rundown of uh, the Doom Patrol characters and different stories and things like that. Uh, it's pretty cool. And then I picked up some issues of Batman. I uh, found this uh, Shadow of the Bat number one. Uh, I believe this originally came bagged. Um, but uh, this is an open, a loose copy, so I uh, went ahead and picked that up anyway. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I believe that's the first appearance of Zaz. Mr. Zaz, the serial killer. It puts uh, markings all over his skin. I found this, uh, I think it's, yeah, 1984 uh, Detective Comics. Uh, it's number 540. Uh, it's pretty cool cover there with the Scarecrow. I found this neat issue of Batman uh, number 450 uh, with that uh, Joker cover. And I picked up three issues. It's a little storyline Dark Knight, Dark City. Ran from Batman 452. You gotta love these Mike Mignola covers. Uh, 453. And 454. And uh, I said it's all really cool. Magnolia covers. And it's a pretty neat story. <clears throat> On to some indie books. Found some pretty neat stuff. Uh, picked up a couple more issues of Valiant uh, Harbinger. From the 90s, uh, number 16 and 17. It's kind of a neat cover there. And then I ran into um, several issues of uh, Grindel. Now first I picked up this prestige format. See it's a thicker book. Uh, it's a Grindel cycle. And uh, this actually is pretty neat. It uh, has a Grendel primer, which kind of gives you the uh, little, little backstory of uh, Grendel. Uh, it's got a history, a timeline, which is uh, pretty cool. And then the uh, cover gallery, which is uh, 
pretty nice as well even though they're all small pitchers that's still pretty neat really dig some Grendel Matt Wagner it's great stuff and then I picked up uh, all three no oh, excuse me at the first issue of uh, Grendel Classics uh, Devil Tracks that's all Matt Wagner and then a three issue mini series I uh, found all three issues there, Grendel Tales, uh, Devil's Hammer, that's issue number one, number two, and number three. And then uh, picked up Comico's uh, Grendel number one with the uh, female Grendel. Um, you know, trying to complete that whole run, so... That was pretty cool. And that is all the 20 cent books. Picked up a good little stack of price books. Um, like once again, there weren't too many people that got there uh, earlier than I did. They get there, uh, you know, around 8 or a little after. And uh, found some pretty good stuff. I got another uh, Charlton Comics uh, Bear and Werewolf's Haunted Library. Uh, it's issue 73. Uh, really, that's a pretty cool cover. This uh, fog in the background. It's got the demon hands coming out after this woman with the eyes there. Thought it was pretty cool. I was really happy to find this Machine Man number four. Great Jack Kirby. And uh, I'll have uh, a couple of issues of that run now. <clears throat> I grabbed this Amazing Spider-Man 190 with uh, Man-Wolf and I have the first part of this story so it's cool to find uh, this issue it's It, The Living Colossus in Astonishing Tales number 24 um, featuring Fin Fang Foom at the, like I said, the first part of this storyline, it's uh, number, Astonishing Tales 23. Uh, the Colossus fighting uh, some monsters. Fin Fang Foom appears, helps them fight off the monsters, and then they start fighting each other. Giant monster battles. Big Godzilla fan, so any, anything with giant monsters is really cool. And that's all the Marvel priced books, and I guess it was one indie book. <clears throat> Found some really cool DC stuff. Uh, working on this Commandy run. There's uh, issue 48, and uh, this is after uh, Kirby left the title, but still pretty cool. And I also found issue 26. Uh, both of them in pretty good shape. 26 is still Jack Kirby, so that is freaking awesome. And uh, then I grabbed these two issues of Brave and the Bold. I actually had two issues uh, in sequence. Um, pretty good shape. It's uh, Brave and the Bold number 100. This is uh, Batman. He's apparently been in a bad fight. He's in a wheelchair. Um, and you can see Batman's critical. The slightest move will kill him. And uh, someone's attacking him as they uh, stand at the door there kind of douchey on their part in it it's not like they can't see that and they also had uh, issue 101 uh, with metamorpho on the cover I thought that was pretty cool speaking of metamorpho I was surprised to find this book it's not in great shape uh, but it was only two bucks it's uh, metamorpho number two as you can see it's got some spine damage but it's still attached. Um, some creasing, a little chip at the corner. But uh, so it's 1965, and, uh, and the guy even puts, you know, covers loose. Um, the bottom staple, it's kind of loose. It's still attached, but it is very loose. I have to handle that very carefully. But uh, it's a neat character, and uh, it's really cool to find those Silver Age books there. Uh, then from the original run of Teen Titans, it's issue 26. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, apparently, 
the uh, Titans are giving up their uniforms. Um, it's also in, you know, kind of beat up shape. There's only a couple of bucks as well. Some spine damage and some creases. Uh, and then a book that I was uh, you know, really kind of surprised to see was still there. Uh, Green Lantern number 67. And it's got, I don't know why somebody marked 10, 10, 10 all over it. Usually you'll find one little spot if they, you know, lowered the price, new stand, they would mark another price on it. Um, but uh, it's in pretty good shape overall. Spine has uh, got a little bit of damage and there's a little crease down here. Um, but still, it's a pretty cool looking cover. And uh, I think it was like four bucks, so decided to go ahead and pick that up. Again, those Silver Age books, just about any condition for just a couple of bucks or so. Um, to me, they're always worth picking up. <clears throat> and yeah, one more thing. I saw this on the wall. The guy carries uh, some records as well. Um, I don't have a record player at home. Uh, I've got my old, you know, multi component stereo system uh, it's still at my parents house I'm sure that my mom's put it in a box or something but uh, it's got a record player eight track player and uh, radio and a tape deck I believe it, it was an old stereo when I had it but uh, it still worked played records just fine I used to listen to their old records but um, I saw this on the wall I decided, what the hell, I, I couldn't pass this up. This is freaking cool. Um, anybody my age and older will definitely remember this show. Six Million Dollar Man. Uh, this is one of those Peter Pan records. I had a bunch of the 45s as a kid, a bunch of Disney stories, things like that. Uh, never seen the full-size uh uh, record of any of them before uh, as you can see it was only three dollars it's uh you know it's it's if you're grading it like a comic book probably be in uh you know good to vg shape but uh still has the two stories intact some pretty cool art but, uh, you know, it's got the origin and uh, second story, uh, The Man from the Future. And I believe uh, Colonel Steve Austin, he actually has to fight a version of himself from the future that is not bionic. But uh, he said it's got both stories intact with the record. And the record is in, other than a little dust on it. No scratches, almost like it's never been played. Um, doesn't even have the little telltale scratches on the the edge, you know, where you put the needle down. But uh, it's in really good shape for three bucks. I figure, what the hell, man? That's a uh, it's a comic, right? See, it's a comic. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I would like to find, you know, like the uh, Batman and uh, Spider-Man when them. Um, he said he had a Spider-Man at one time. It was in really good shape. Um, but that was a couple years ago. And uh, Star Trek. Which uh, had um, uh, Spock, uh, Kirk, and um, McCoy on the the cover of the record. Uh, I wish he still had those. That, those. Those would be cool. But uh, I thought this was a good find. Um, you know, he said... The main thing is the record is in near perfect shape. Um, the sleeve is, you know, it's got some, some creases and stuff. And I think the corner was cut off here. But, you know, the art inside is still there. And uh, can't wait to find, to get a record player and play this and listen along and read the story, you know, like you used to do with the, the smaller 45s as a kid. Anyway, thought this was pretty cool. Yeah. 
All right, thanks again for uh, watching, everybody. I really appreciate it. Um, all the uh, likes and comments are greatly appreciated as well. And uh, till next time, uh, like always, take care and keep reading the books. Later.